Hi, welcome to the Urban Outdoorsman SoCal video. My name is Danny Milton, and today we're gonna to be flying the Mavic 3. Last night while I was at work, DJI released the newest firmware update for the Mavic 3. In that firmware update, and I'll show you on screen some of the things that they're releasing, uh, the biggest one for me is ActorTrack 5.0. Um, I've done a ton of Actor Track videos with the Mavic Air 2. If you want to see that list, click right there. Just a ton of Active Track testing and tutorials. Today we're going to be flying the Mavic 3. This is literally my first test using the Active Track. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of climbing on the bike. We're going to do a little bit of just kind of mellow stuff, you know, switchbacks. And we're going to try a little bit of downhill as well. So the biggest new feature that I saw while I was watching a couple of videos last night on the release of the new firmware is that you can tell the drone where to record you from. Before in the past, anytime you used Active Track on any of the previous models, basically you had trace and parallel mode. Trace would pretty much record you from behind and parallel would be kind of like at a 45 degree angle depending on how fast you were going. Now with this new update, you can tell the drone to be in front of you, to your right, to your left, you know, wherever behind you. And hopefully that'll work really well. So that was probably the most asked question I got on all of my previous Actor Track videos is if you can tell the drone to be in a specific area. In the past, like I said, you couldn't. Uh, the only drone that I was aware of that you could do that with was the Skydio 2. And I also have the Skydio 2 and I have a bunch of tracking videos with that. You can click on that link right there if you want to see how those are working. So this is actually pretty big. That's what she said. <laughs> you can't tell it to be a specific distance from you, especially once you start moving. The drone, you know, will kind of come in and come out depending on how fast you're moving. Um, if you're at like a slow walking pace, I'm sure it'll stay a certain distance away from you. Being able to tell it where to track from is is pretty cool. So far it's been hit and miss. The drone doesn't like it when I switch directions or stop. Um, a couple times I tried to ride underneath the drone and switch directions and didn't like that. Um, the drone is having a hard time tracking me while it's in front of me. Uh, for some reason I can't increase the distance between me and the drone and it's so close it's having to fly all over the place to stay in front of me you know as we're going down the trail so we just got a successful run down one of the trails while it was tracking me from behind I was not going anywhere near full speed but it made it all the way down uh, on that particular trail the Mavic Air 2 sometimes would lose me on that rock step up section sometimes it wouldn't it just depends it was able to follow me all the way you know the full length of the trail so that's pretty good you know tracking me from behind uh, we're gonna have to charge up some more batteries and maybe try from either side left or right but so far tracking from the front the drone is just way too close to me and it keeps losing me starting off nice and easy the drone is out to my right Again, it's just way too close. It would be a lot better if it was another 30, 40 feet away because of stuff like that happens. It starts to come in tight and then I turn towards it and then it has to back up really fast. Gotta be able to increase the distance somehow. I'm gonna have to look through. Again, not going anywhere near full speed right now. And once again, the Skydio 2 followed me down this trail several times. Full speed, never once lost me. Tracking from the right, tracking from behind, tracking from front. You can't lose that drone. Whereas this one, this is going to get interesting because we've got some spots with high bushes. On the right hand side, this turn right here kind of mess up the Mavic Air 2 sometimes. This section did not get enough rain. It's still pretty nasty. Got high bushes again there. All right, still on us. Got some more high bushes coming up. Kind of standing up tall. See if it'll make it through there. It did. Still on us, that's good. 
going a little bit faster right now. Looks like it's kind of having a hard time keeping up. So I'm going to slow down a little bit. And we got really high bushes coming up and a big tree. Hopefully no crashes of the drone. This part's going to be pretty difficult right here. All right, it looks like it actually made it around that tree and went into attack mode and almost flew right into it. Okay, so overall, the drone did a decent job tracking me. Tracking me from the front was a real challenge. I still haven't figured out how to make the drone stay farther away from me. Uh, I tried one time uh, locking onto myself and then moving the, manually moving the drone away from me and then hitting the go button to start tracking. And then as soon as you hit that go button, the drone just starts getting closer and closer and closer to you. And the same thing would happen. I, I would start moving and as soon as I started going more than a couple miles per hour or started turning side to side, the drone would just lose me. That was in front. Now with the drone to my right, we had a, a successful run down one of the trails. And then with the drone directly behind me, we also had a successful run down that trail as well. And that trail has a lot of high bushes and problems, you know, that the Mavic Air 2 uh, would definitely lose me on. But the, uh, the Mavic 3 did a pretty good job. So I am definitely really excited about being able to change the direction of where the drone is going to record you from. I mean, that was probably the number one question I would get asked all the time when I would do tracking in parallel modes. You know, everybody would assume if you put it in parallel mode, in the old active tracks that it would stay directly to your right or directly to your left and that's not parallel that's perpendicular so this drone still has parallel mode uh, and you can use that it's usually at like a 45 degree angle once you start moving away from the drone but having the drone be able to stay on one side or the other is really good you know sometimes when you're going down a trail you have an open side of the trail and you have you know the high side or the hill of the trail so being able to keep the drone on the open side will definitely increase the ability for the drone to stay locked onto you. The drone recording from behind me did a great job as well. It still is a little bit too close. I, I really need to figure out how to keep the drone a little bit farther away. I know in the Skydio 2, you can kind of set the distance. You know, it's not an exact measurement, but there's four buttons or four dots you can choose from, from close to far. Um, it will stay locked onto you from pretty far away. I know that the Mavic Air 2, when I was in my truck out in the desert would stay locked onto me from a pretty good distance. So it's it's either something I'm missing in the settings or it's just something that they need to update in a new form, uh, new firmware. Okay, so thanks so much for watching guys. Hopefully this is something that you've been looking forward to. I know a lot of people have been complaining about not being able to have active track and POI and a couple other features. So this is just a real quick video. Uh, I'm gonna be doing a lot more testing on my mountain bike, walking around the park, just like I did with the Mavic Air 2 and just like I did with the Skydio so far. Um, we'll see, you know, I'll do a head-to-head -head comparison between the Mavic 3 and the Skydio 2. I'm gonna be doing, like I said, a bunch of more, a bunch more active tracks, seeing how far we can push those speeds. I do know a couple times while it was tracking me from the right-hand side, the drone got all the way up to, I wanna say 22 miles per hour. Um, I'll put a little, you know, thing right here to show the top speed, which is really great because with the Mavic Air 2, the top speed while it was tracking me on my mountain bike was about 16 and a half. So that's already, what, five, six, six miles per hour faster than the Mavic Air 2. I'm not sure about the 2S, never had it, but that's that's definitely something to be excited about as well. Okay, so do all that fun stuff for me, please. Smash that like button, share, comment, subscribe. You know, if uh, leave me some comments below. You know, if you guys have any questions about how to do stuff like this, I'm gonna do, you know, a full tutorial on how to do the active track with the new Mavic 3. I just need to get some more practice with it so that I can show you guys a really good how-to, like a tutorial on how to use the Active Track 5.0. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you are already subscribed, make sure you click that bell notification so that when those new videos do come out, you will get notified. I'm gonna be cranking these out as quickly as possible to get these out to you guys, so stay tuned for all of that. And last but not least, click on one of the boxes in the corners. One will take you to my Mavic 3 playlist, the other will to the Mavic Air 2 playlist, and you can click the icon in that bottom left-hand corner, the Urban Outdoorsman SoCal logo to subscribe. Thanks a lot.